Busters. What's cracking, family? We are back. Your boy is back. What's happening? All right. Welcome to another episode of Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy you are here. Yes, sir. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy hey, to be I'm here. back, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be, I'm going to be popping in here and there, bro. But I'm definitely back for this particular episode, man. It's important to both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I could be here for every single episode, man. But as you guys know, I'm sure Tone has mentioned it. And I, I got a lot of uh, production I'm I'm doing. I'm getting ready to uh, start the new year with. So I'm I'm deep in 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 the, in the writers room. I'm deep in in meetings, getting ready to gear up for 2025, man. And uh, I'm excited about it. Um, I hate that I, I can't be here every week with y'all like I used to be. But I will be back. I will always be back. Um, and man, I'm happy to be here, bro. Um, we are going to have a good time today. Cause I got a lot to say yeah. about this particular film. Yeah. Yeah. I well, mean, you thing, know, yeah, I, I told y'all the truth. I told you the man was going to be back. I told oh, yeah. you he was out there taking care of business. Come on. Uh, man. and here he is right on time. Yes. Sir. Um, like I said, bro, it's, 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 we've had fun, you know, doing a couple of movies uh-huh. without you being here. Yeah, sorry. You and brother um, Andrew, man. For sure. Yeah, you know, we 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 you know the 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 train's gonna run on time. Of course. Uh, but it's uh-huh. always a special day uh when Medium Ja is on the podcast. Whoa! <laughs> hey man, <laughs> I'm still big job, man. Look, you see the title. <laughs> but I've lost some weight. I've lost a good amount of weight. Yeah. Um it was it was it was time, man. I'm sure y'all been watching the show for over a year now, and y'all been seeing your boy Ja look plump as hell. Look real round, and um, I finally had to had to make a change in my how I ate, how I how I worked out. I had to start working out again, consistently eating properly because mm-hmm. I was I was gaining weight by the month, man. I, I feel like every month I'm gaining three to five pounds, and it got it got out of hand. It got out of hand bad, so I had to make a decision to really start changing my life my life choices when it comes to eating and working out, man. And I, I've done that. So I'm doing that now. I'm still in the process of losing even more weight, man. I'm trying to get fit, trying to get trying to get swole again, man. And yeah, uh, so what's yeah. happening, bro? But yeah, I'm still big Jono, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't too many niggas bigger than me still. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, listen, listen, listen. Um, Like I said, like your health journey, I'm really just projecting on you. Right. Like, you know, like, 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 I'm really like, I need to get on my grind. So maybe if I call a medium job, he'll say something to piss me off. And then I'll go walk on the treadmill Uh, for 40 hours. Nah, I'll fuck with you. I ain't got no bad words to say. You tell me, hey, I missed you, brother. I missed you, man. man. I'm glad that Andrew is doing this thing. You know, I got me and me and Andrew go back. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I was, I was shooting a film about 12 years ago where I met Andrew. It's small world. Before I even, I know you and Andrew go way back too. Mm-hmm. Probably even further than that. Before yeah. you and I met, I knew Andrew and didn't know that y'all knew each other. It's a small yeah. world, man. So the yeah. fact that you guys are doing the podcast together in my absence, uh, my temporary absence, uh, is great, man. And um, mm-hmm. I'm glad that he's around. I'm glad to, that he's that, that I'm seeing him again. He's always been a good dude, smart guy, hilarious, super talented. Yep. Um, yeah, man. So I'm back for a minute. Yeah, and I'll be I'll be popping in like I said in a. Uh, yeah, dog, it's it's dope. It's good to be here. I'm excited about this this is this episode we about to do. Yeah, this is one of them ones, Ja. This is one, one of them ones, ones, bro. I had to pop in for this one, bro. Yeah, I want to pop in for every single one y'all have done. I know to it. Keep it a hundred. I'm like, <laughs> damn, damn, damn. But I'm glad you're doing it with Andrew. Yeah, for sure. Or or whoever else you decide. As long as you are here or I'm here, Blackbusters is never going nowhere, man. So. Yeah. Um, it's important that we keep it going, man. Um, hopefully, the people out there, the supporters, rock with it. They 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 get interested and engaged with every episode that we do. And I'm glad that uh, even when I'm not able to do it every week, that you're still here, bro. Because you sure. are, you know, what I'm saying the other half of this blackbuster movement, brother. Yes, sir. You know, what yes, I'm saying? sir. So once again, I'm your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. along with my co-host, Tones Tone Tone Room. Tones, tone, tone the room. <laughs> what you you know what I'm I know they got gambling. They got, you know they got gambling. They got, we got, listen, yes, sir. In, in tones, tone, tone room, we got women. We got gambling. We got gumbo. This, this we got the tone, ooh, tone room. gumbo. <laughs> gumbo with hot water cornbread yeah. and regular cornbread. Both cornbreads. Hot. That you ain't got. Cornbread. That you ain't got to fight for. <laughs> you ain't got to fight for. Nothing. Yeah, there's enough cornbread to go around. Right. Right. So, Love man. It. Um. 
this movie, here's the thing. Y'all see us sometimes we do it remotely in, in, in various in separate places. That's literally because we be so busy, bro. Um, Tone has a busy schedule and I have a very busy, busy, busy schedule as well. So sometimes we can't, we can't link up mm-hmm. every week to film a show, unfortunately. And when we can, you see us in, in, our, in our studio. Yep. In the studio, so but th- we wanted to be in the studio to, to do we this. We wanted one. to do it, this one together. It's always better when you across the table yep. from me, bro. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? This works too because we can see each other. We can still talk, and, and and the information that we give out and the review we give out is still just as strong. But it's nothing like that in person. Yeah. Energy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When you get back in town, we let's go in. Let's go oh, in yeah, for sure, and let's knock out some of them West Coast classics. You know, there's, there's, there's a couple that like we're overdue for, like, you Uh know, again, like, like I, you know, we, we ration it out. If we just do every movie in like order of popularity, you know, Uh then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of like, we'll burn out, we'll burn fast. And then we will have, you know, then it will be just nothing but like B sides and like old, old, old classics. But there are a couple of mega movies that we haven't done yet. That I right. think we need to like check a couple of those boxes um, I agree. and get in the studio and do those. I agree. I agree. And we're going to do that in studio, man. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, man, we remote and we're going to talk about the movie, the film, the classic life. The world has changed so very much from what it used to man. be. Man, man, give it the rundown. Life, life, <laughs> life, life. Yeah. Man, life, bro. And you know what? We've talked about life for a long time, and yeah. we, we we took us a long time to do this film because, oh, well, hence, like I said, we wanted to, we wanted to do this in 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 studio, but mm-hmm. this is fine, man. Uh, life is a one in a one of a kind film, in my opinion. Yes, there's not many like it. Um, there's multiple genres that are embedded into this film. The cast. The story, mm-hmm. the time period, mm-hmm. powerful, bro. Man, powerful. I this feel is like top every shelf. scene. Go ahead. This is top shelf. Top right? shelf. You know, I know you don't drink, but for those of us that do, every now and then you get a bottle of some super premium shit, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. you put that one up in 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 the pantry cabinet or or the cabinet. Mm-hmm. And you save that one for when it's a really special occasion, right? Yes. To me, life is one of those movies where right. it is top shelf. That's right, fellas. Catch Just any cab heading uptown him. because all the drivers know about raids. Boom, boom. Laugh. And I almost like to go long phases without watching it because yes. I never want to like not appreciate it. I never right. want to like take it for granted or play it out because every time I watch it, it just hits so dope for me. And it's like, I take it and then I go like, okay, I'm going to put it back. I'm not going to watch it on YouTube clips. I'm going to put it back and I'm going to wait a couple of years and watch it again. Yeah. It's one of yeah. them ones. So absolutely, bro. And that's one of the reasons why it took us so long to do it. Cause you're like, nah, it, it ain't ready yet. We, we mm-hmm. can't do this yet. I kept putting it off. Because I, I I love this movie so much, and I'll give you a take, and also lack thereof. Mm-hmm. I'm a, there's a reason. Like there's, a, I have a certain interesting relationship with with life. Okay, and I don't really feel this way about many other movies, but this movie in particular, I have a very interesting relationship with. Okay, and um, so we're gonna get into it, man. Life is uh. Written by, it was written by uh, Robert Ramsey and Matthew Stone, mm-hmm. and directed by Ted Dem or Demi. Yep. I think it's Dem. Obviously, it is uh, casted and starring Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, Oba Babintunde, mm-hmm. Anthony Anderson, Miguel Nunez, Bernie Mac, Sanaa Lathan. Uh, Guy Rick, Tory. Rick James, Guy Tory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, talk about an ensemble cast. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, bro. Yeah. Beautiful film. Beautifully paced. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The pacing. Yes. Was, it, it, it was such a 
has so much heart to me, man. And it's a in a lot of comedies have a lot of comedy in it, but this mm-hmm. movie has so much heart. Yeah, it has so much yeah. to take away from than just laughs, homie. And everybody like adds a little to the heart of the movie. Like man. like all of the characters, you know these 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 people feel real. Like these guys that we start to get acquainted with in this camp, and you can feel not only the bond of who these people are supposed to be on screen, but I just imagine how amazing it was just to be on okay. set, on right? Set. Like, you know, like this is happening, this story that is like dominated primarily by black men, right? Telling this story about brotherhood and friendship and optimism despite circumstances, um, it is such a unique blend of all the things that like you should love about black cinema. It's got, it's, it's funny. It's really funny. Um, Brave, but man. it has, it has that heart and at and action and pace and color and sound and all it's got all the things you want a movie to have. Yes. It was like the, probably the best, tasting gumbo you've ever had. Yeah, that's it, Ja. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's it. That's and it. And as a kid, this movie came out in 1999, mm-hmm. right? And at the time, I didn't think I was a kid, but I can say now, looking back, okay, I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, Eddie Murphy was my favorite comedian. Mark Lawrence was my favorite comedian. Mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx was my favorite comedian. Those are my top three Yep. And of course you got the Richard Pryor, the goat, you know what I'm saying? You got the Bill Cosby, you got the Fred Sanford. And then later on came the Dave Chappelle. Right. Mm-hmm. And then of course you got the Rick, Rick, uh, I mean, Chris Rock. That was, he's in there as well. Yeah. But like my main guy, especially when it comes to movies is Eddie Murphy, Mark Lawrence, Jamie Foxx. Yep. yep. Jamie Foxx would have been overkill in this film. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. But yeah. having Eddie Murphy and Mark Lawrence in the film, after Boomerang, I was like, yes, finally, we got another film with these brothers in it. Mm-hmm. Finally. Even, even more so than the Boomerang. Yeah. Like Martin's character, you, you're talking about chemistry. Yes. Chemistry. Yes. And everybody, there's no one, I don't know how it was in real life, but it felt like on camera that no one shine, outshined the other. And yep. not not it's just Eddie Murphy is who he is. He's a superstar. He 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 been a superstar since twenty four. Mm-hmm. Martin Lawrence became a superstar in his own right. Yep. And these guys shared the screen, shared the stardom, and it was beautiful, bro. And it, yeah. it was everything you thought a Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy movie would be, homie. Yeah, yeah. And and it's uh. and it's different because you know Claude for a good portion of the movie kind of plays the stick in the mud character. Yes. Right. Like he's, he's funny, but like the character, the role kind of requires him to not like let loose yet. Right. And Eddie is just a machine gun. He's just an automatic weapon of talk and jokes and slick and savvy. You know, it's interesting and I wanted to ask you about this. And this and this might morph into a hot take. There's a difference between, I think, like my favorite Eddie Murphy movies and my favorite Eddie Murphy performances, right? Um, there are other movies that like Eddie has put out that like, like I love Boomerang. Like I really love Boomerang. Um, but I think that that life might be Eddie's best performance. I have heard right. that several times. I think it's his best performance because Ray is fantastic his entire life, right? Like he is like so charismatic and so funny and so slick. I'm from New York, you know. He's got York. all of these things What's going. Former boys, yeah, yeah. But he's but he's not a clown. Like he's a real character that has heart and feeling and emotions and. I think it's Eddie's best performance. I think, you know, like, like I know that we've got to, you know, uh, there's some people that think it, it could have been the nutty professor. Um, you know, I think I, you know, 
it could some might go Axel Foley. For me, it's 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 Ray. Like I Ray I, Gibson, Rayford yeah. Gibson from yeah, New York it's City. It's my favorite. Um, and he did such a good job, bro. It was like, man, this dude is phenomenal as an actor. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal, not just as a comedian. Phenomenal actor, bro. Yeah. Um, he's definitely you can't say he's played the same character. Ray Gibson is different from Quick from Hollow yep. Knight. Yes. Quick is different from uh Marcus Graham, even. That's so great. And definitely, definitely different from Axel Foley. Hundred percent. And a thousand percent different from uh uh Professor, Clump. Professor. Yeah. Professor Clump, man. Yeah. So he's done so much, man. And this and Martin and Martin, in my opinion, man, come on. Martin plays a great stick in the mud mm-hmm. with so much feeling. Um, and he's the kind of person that he was a he wasn't he was a, a stick in the mud in this movie initially, but you still liked him. Yeah. He's never he's he's very likable in all his characters, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this movie was a great melting pot of of their talents. It showcased their talents. And it showcased it, 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 the pacing was so good. I keep bringing the pacing. The pacing was so good because you saw the maturation process of their relationship, of their mm-hmm. friendship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and how it it organically became what it was. Yeah. And you mentioned something about Martin's character being a stick in the mud, and he played it so well. One person that I work with that is an amazing actor that plays this character very well. The stick in the mud, the know it all is my boy Barry, my boy Barry yep. Brewer. <laughs> yes. So when I promise yes. you, yes. I'm so influenced by Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy, Spike Lee, uh, Jamie Fox. These are guys who I grew up watching, and they they, they they watching these guys are the reasons why I wanted to do this. Yeah, Damon Wayans, Keenan Ivy Wayans, you know what I'm saying? Tommy yeah. Davidson. These are the guys I watched. Uh, Jim Carrey. So when I did the lesbian, I mean, when I did the whole crew, the whole crew was stupid. The the first person I wanted to get to play Keontae, which plays one of my close friends, was Barry. Um, it was Barry. I've been yeah. doing Barry a long time. Barry is an exceptional stand up comedian, an exceptional actor, and a, an exceptional person, off camera, off stage. He is just as 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 strong of a character as it's in his personality and who he is as he is on stage. And so when I watch movies like Life, I'm like, damn. I feel like I'm doing idea. I'm doing a cool job of, of creating that type of character because Claude is conflicted. He's a conflicted individual, and he. I don't think he understands his the error in his ways by himself. Yes, hundred percent. He just like, sees, He wants to blame everything on, on Ray, Ray, and Ray is the Ray is the no the no good bootlegger that has a heart. Yes. Right. And like, Claude is like, the straight like, leg. The, the, he's the straight leg um, square that is selfish mm-hmm. and only thinks about himself. Ray saved Claude's life. Bro, and he did not have to. And he didn't have to. And at first, at first I went back and I said, I was asking myself, why does why does Ray even care about Claude? And I thought, like, well, maybe Ray thinks that Claude is in trouble because he pickpocketed him. Exactly. Right? But there was no money in the wallet because Claude had already been shook down by some other goons who, who, who we owed money. Right. And so, so the fact that like, like when Ray is, when Ray is talking to Spank, Ray's not even, Ray's not even in trouble. Really? He's not in a, he's having a conversation with Spank. Like, listen, man, you know, I'm trying to make a dollar like you. I'm just trying to hustle okay. like you. Like he's on the, he's able to talk to Spank eye to eye. Right. right. And, once he makes the deal to make the bootleg run, he could easily walk away from from Claude, right? And he and he extends. He says, "Give me the guy. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Let me take him, man. He's Let square, me man. He don't know no better, man. He don't know what he's into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you did. Yeah, come on, man. Listen, man. I'm gonna make good with it. You know who I am. You know uh-huh. what it is. You know what it isn't. But give me the square." And even and even Spank was like, "You sure?" And he was like, yeah. Yeah, "Just give them to me." Like that that gesture, and listen, that gesture of Ray looking out for Claude exists throughout the entire movie, right? Yes. And 
we don't really see Claude looking out for Ray until much later, much um, later in the movie. And so, yeah, they're, they're these two polar opposites, but Ray saved Claude. Ray saved Claude several times. Yes. Mm-hmm. Even, even in small scenes like the pie scene, mm-hmm. why only pies and nigga pies? Claude yep. by himself might have gotten shot. Yes. He wouldn't let he, he wouldn't leave good alone. He wouldn't leave it alone. Like and 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 Ray didn't really want no problems with nobody. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hey man, like he, he we shouldn't be over here, man. Let's get up out of here. Let's, let's yeah. not do that. You know what I'm saying? One thing he, he just wanna have a good time, right? And and he, and and there's one other thing to to remember, even when they're in they're in the diner and it's the nigga pies. Ray is trying to help Claude get what he wants, even though he knows it's a bad decision. When he pulls out his money and goes, "How much would it cost for the for, you know for for these white pies to be nigga pies?" He like, despite the circumstance, he's still trying to look out for for Claude. So so right. the affinity is 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 absolutely it's one way right now, and this is what I think why Martin plays it so well is that like, ha, ah, he's like Claude ultimately is likable, very likable, but mm-hmm. this early version of him, like fuck Claude, <laughs> right? Like, you know, oh, like, I think he's a, he's an asshole. He's an right. asshole. Um, that doesn't even appreciate the fact that he's, that he'd be dead by now. And he'd be dead because of him. Mm hmm. All right. Yes. So one thing I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I forgot at one point in time when I first watched this years ago, I forgot that Claude actually owned he he, he owed money yep. to a gangster. Yep. Oh, so he would he was he he's not all high and mighty like he tries to portray. Yes. I'm starting my new job on Monday. Yes. Okay, that's cool. But you owe a gangster today fifty dollars. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of money in 1932. A hell of a lot of money. Yeah. In 1932, so like, yeah, bro. You, but he didn't let the, he didn't let Ray know that I owed this guy. That's why they, they that's why they dumping me in this water. Right. He didn't bring that up. Yeah. He just brought up the 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 dining dash type shit. Like it begs the question. Like, like does he does Claude even have a job? Right. Because like they never really reveal why he's in debt to to goons, and you don't you don't accidentally get in debt to goons or accidentally get in debt to, right. to mobsters. How right? do you get, how do you get there? You get how there because yes. you put yourself in that position. Yes. So like, so it, it, it's interesting that to think about Claude could have been a full fraud, right? Just as, just as shady, even though I wouldn't call Ray shady, but again, like, like he's got, when somebody comes and finds you in a stall, and takes all your money, like you've been into some shit. You've been into some shit, bro. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, dog. This movie has so many layers, especially especially to the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray talks about his dad a lot. Yes. Reminds me of myself. Like Ray had a uh, Ray had a sense of. You can tell they grew up different. Ray mm-hmm. had a sense of morals or a sense of uh, uh, understanding of how the world that he knows works. Mm-hmm. And he was living in it. So I think he just saw he did, even the pickpocket, pickpocket and the shady, right? Right. But he's based on, we didn't see this, but he's the type of person that would the pickpocket you, use your money in a, in a, in a crap game, mm-hmm. win big, and pickpocket you back by putting your money back. Yeah. I can see him doing that. Hence, yeah. and this is why I say that because he saved Claw from getting killed, getting, from drowning. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to do that. That's not his business, right? You know what I'm saying? I I I got I, I got an, another deal with Spank, mm-hmm. and I'm a, I'm about to go do this this uh this bootlegging run with the with the booze. Yep. I can pick somebody else. Let me get up out of here before they kill me too. Mm-hmm. Nah, he said, "Hey man, take him with. Let me take him with me. Bring. We have to do that. Let me have the square. Um, yeah. And so they so. They get down, they do the bootlegging deal, and there's a little juke joint, and you know, Ray's Ray loves a good time, so he's down there, and that's when we get to see, um, you know, Claude. We get to see 
um, what's our what's our guy uh, that passed away? Uh, Clarence Williams the third. Clarence Williams. Winston III. Hancock. Yeah. 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 He's he's fantastic. <laughs> uh, um yeah. he's fantastic. And then Lisa Nicole Carson shows up again. Um always I hate fun. The fact that she's not around a lot more. Or she wasn't. Yeah. I hate the fact that she wasn't a lot. We see her, Sylvia, Lisa Nicole Carson. Sylvia, she was the 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 busty vixen of her era. Yeah. And and she could act her ass off. Yes. And she could act. So it's man, uh, it's so it's she's such a warm char- actor, character. Mm-hmm. Every character she plays plays warm. You just want to keep watching her. Um, them going to that juke joint, that juke joint is is claw is is Ray's fault. Yes, yes, is is his fault. Um, he got he got he got uh, played in the, in the card game, mm-hmm. and uh, they were going to leave. Well, so he so he he lost his money, and then they, after that, they lost the gas money. money. They lost the, lost gas, the money. gas money because Claude was up there smashing. <laughs> yeah, once again, yeah. Claude's not perfect. Claude is yes. not the goody two shoes. Claude got a whole girl, got a whole girlfriend. I'm you glad know what I'm saying we don't talk about that, that but hey, bro, you literally went on the run with the homie down to Mississippi and slid into something else that wasn't your girl. Yep, no judgment. I'm just saying. You ain't as squeaky clean as you act like you are, bro. Exactly. You know so, exactly. and, and I, but I love that about his character. I love that about his character, um, because it shows that he's not a victim. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You might, yeah, of course. You, you, you're dumb too, but because you could have easily went up there and got robbed, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, yeah, I think, I think these guys right. are meant to be together without even knowing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I and think. Then, go ahead. They get like. Like I said, it's it's such a good pairing because they're so different, right? They're 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 so different, but it's a good pairing. And then, you know, they stumble out. They got to figure out how they're gonna get home because they got no gas. Clarence Williams falls out. Hancock, you know, he's dead. They've got blood on them. They're in trouble. They're in trouble, and they get spotted by some local townsmen. Some yep. white racist townsmen in the city, and they're like, "Man, yeah, you look like it look like this brother's dead, and y'all had mm-hmm. something to do with it. Y'all coming with us now? They in the mm-hmm. now they in the jail in the holding cell. Yeah, black yeah. men in 1932 in Mississippi, bad combination with blood on their shirt and a dead mm-hmm. body right in front of them. That's a a recipe for disaster. You know what I'm saying? And e- so, and even then, when Ray, when they're behind bars for the first time. Ray is so reasonable. He's having a conversation. Like, listen, we from New York. First of all, we ain't killed nobody, right? We ain't killed nobody. You know, we found them like that. But look, if you could find it to let us, he said, the 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 moonshine is ours. The whiskey is ours. That's us. We, we, did, we, we, did, it. we did that. We did that. I got a guy, you know, in New York that if you were to let us go, would be, you know, very gracious. Very gracious and helpful. All reasonable stuff. It's it's Claude in the in the background who is who is not even taking Ray's negotiation seriously. He's not even letting them cook. He's doing extra stuff that's just like, listen, you could like I'm having a conversation with this man about some real shit, and you kind of like cartooning back here. You know, you're not reading the room, you're not reading the situation of of what this situation requires. Right. Right, um, and ultimately it ends up failing. <laughs> they end up yes. getting sentenced but to life. He tried, he tried, and Claude has a, a false sense of value, of self value. You make the same point when when we were talking about bad boys, and how Martin Lawrence has that ability in the characters that he plays to his characters seem like they're bigger than what they actually are stronger than what they actually are, Mm -hmm. you know, smarter than what they actually are. Um, When we did bad boys, you, you pointed out that ability in Martin Lawrence's acting. And I think you're a hundred percent right. It shows up here in terms of how Claude sees the world and sees himself in it. Yeah, man. He, he feels like he can talk his way out of it. Not like Ray. Ray tries to swindle the game. He tries to game his way out of it. 
because he has a street dude. He's a hustler. Claude mm-hmm. tries to, it's the right thing to do, and we didn't do anything. You should trust us. Take our word for it because we are who mm-hmm. we are. No, you are just two niggas in Mississippi, bro. You, you, yep. We're from New York. Look, I'm dressed nice. I have a nice haircut. Nah, mm-hmm. you're just a black man to us that we don't care. And you're a hoodlum to us. He he doesn't realize that these white men look at him as less than. He thinks that because he's a, a, a he's an educated man, went to night school, he starts a job on Monday. That he that, that he's that he's a, a valuable enough human being to talk yep. his way out of it the right way. No, yeah, that, 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 Claude, Ray Claude knows Ray knows who he is. Yeah, huh? Claude thinks he's better than people. Yes, and yes. that's that's his fundamental flaw. Ray doesn't think he's better than anyone, right? Like you mm-hmm. know, but Claude does. Claude thinks he's better than Ray. Claude thinks that he's better than the people in the diner, which is why yeah. he don't you know, respect their rules and situations. Um, you know, when they get to the prison, when they get to the prison, he thinks he can take his shirt off and take a break. Yeah. In prison. <laughs> on right. the picket line. On the break right. line. What? Yeah. I'm tired, yeah. man. It's hot out here. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> Let me take a breather, boss. Yeah. 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 Well, go ahead. You were yeah. saying that like, when he gets but to the prison, when he gets to the prison, you know, it's it's Ray that stops Claude from being like a bitch on day one. The whole cornbread situation, Ray wasn't even fighting for his cornbread. That cornbread. whole fight was was for Claude's cornbread. Yeah, because Claude was going to give. Claude was going to give the, and he said, nah, don't give, don't give that man your cornbread. Man, fuck you. you know? Fuck him. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And then homie was, was like, okay, well, I'll take your cornbread. Right. Oh. Like, you know, that is, that whole scene is, is about Ray standing in front and going like, you're not going to punk my friend. And you're not going to punk me. And you're, you're not, not going to punk, punk me. Us. Mm-hmm. You us. us. Keyword yeah. there. He always was us. He always was we. We got to figure this out. Mm-hmm. I got a map. We can get up out of here. Yeah. And, and yeah, so from the from from the jump, we see that Ray is a swindler, but mm-hmm. Ray has a code. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even when he lost that car game at the beginning, he lost his daddy's watch. Yeah. And he was gonna eat that. He was gonna accept that until he, he was found out that they that were L. cheating. Yep. He was gonna take that L. He was like, man, damn, okay. So even when he got, he, he was down to his last little bread. He paid for his drink and was trying to get up out of there. Mm-hmm. Like he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a swindler, a hustler, but he lives by a certain type of code. Yeah. And really Claude didn't have that. Claude is all about himself. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent. Even hundred, which is one of the reasons why he lost his woman. So now Lathan's character, mm-hmm. because his, his cousin is a lawyer that was trying to help him get an appeal to get out of prison. And the and the girlfriend was like, your cousin asked me to ask you if you wanted him to uh, uh, do an appeal on behalf of your boy Ray Gibson as well. He was like, no, yeah, no, yeah. just we just worry about me. He's the reason why I'm in this place. Just Super worry about shady. me. And that shows Super you what kind of character he is. And the wife, I mean, the girlfriend was like, oh, that's kind of shady. I mean, yep. I mean, because yep. even your own cousin doesn't even know Ray and still asked. What about the guy that you're in prison with? Yeah. Maybe you want to get him out of there too? That's Everyone is on that same page but him. And it isn't until Claude runs out of options when, when, it, when it's, that, it's the situation with the appeal, Claude's appeal gets denied, and now suddenly Claude wants to talk to Ray about that map and getting away, right? When, when Claude had run out of options... options. Who was the first person that he turned to was Ray. And I thought it was so telling that Ray never even had a map. That he said, the only way I was going to get you get you to come with me, I could have been gone. I, I didn't have no map. Myself. I could have I been making my attempt. But I knew that I needed to bring you with me. And the only way to get you to come along was to act like we had a map. Like, 
real Bro, evidence of a it, deep friendship code from day one from the first hour they met mm-hmm. he was showing love and looking out for him and yep. ray was blind i mean claude was blind to it the whole time yeah so that's crazy and and, and i love it though i love it that's real life sometimes mm-hmm. people i some, sometimes people be in their own way now i want to make a statement now because now we talk about them in prison mm-hmm. things went south this movie was hilarious. It's funny. It was engaging up until they get put in prison and you hear the the, the judge hit the gavel life yeah. in prison yeah. and they on that bus yeah. going to Mississippi State Prison. And I was like, damn. And I want to say this. You know, I, I purposely did this. I want to talk about how good this film is, how much I love, how much I love the film. But I also want to tell you also this. I, I have to be honest with my with myself and with the fans, the supporters, the viewers, mm-hmm. and my brother Tone. T- Tone's Tone Tone Room. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie, I don't really like it. And let me tell you why. Going to watch Life in the Theater way back when, and every time I watched Life, but in the theater, I went to go see it. I remember being there with some of the homies, and I left there feeling like, damn, that was an amazing movie. But I didn't like it as much. And it leaves me with an unsettling energy. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you why. Yep. Watching life is like catching up with your loved ones that you haven't seen in a long time at a repass. Yeah. At a funeral repass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're laughing, talking about old times, laughing, crying, tearing up, getting emotional. That's how I feel about watching life. Such yeah. a great moment. Yeah. Such a great moment in the movie. Hour and 45 minutes worth of film. Such a great moment. But it's the, a deep feeling I have. It's like, damn. Yeah. Like to see that these young men, black men in 1932, and rural, in the rural South get framed for a murder mm-hmm. that they didn't commit and yeah. are sentenced to life in prison. That's such a realistic situation a realistic scenario in that time yep and that saddens me bro that saddens me that frustrates me that makes me angry and there's nothing they can do about it there's no one there that can advocate for them because any other black person is just as um has less power as they do yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like damn and it's just very it's very and then you start to think these guys didn't do it some of these guys in the prison that were there before they got there probably didn't do it either. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't even it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So this movie was so sad to me at a lot of times, bro, in the arguments, in the frustration. Um, I kind of even I, I'm critiquing Claude's character and his his lack thereof, his selfishness, but you can I, I can see the frustration. He doesn't know who to be mad at other right. than Ray. Raise yeah. the punching bag, and he probably hates himself for the for even getting in the situation where the the, the loan sharks have to come get his money. So mm-hmm. this is like two guys, two different guys that are on the path, different path, different ways of life, but they find themselves in the same situation because they're black, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. that's a, when it boils down to it. They're in that prison because they're black. Yeah. You know, it's not for because Razor Blue for Lager, as long for as long as they're going to be there, right? Not because of raised, not because of raised a blue bootlegger and they were transporting uh uh illegal booze. That's mm-hmm. not why. It's because they're black. Yeah, and, and this is 1932, um, roughly 60, 70 years after the end of slavery, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. and this is where you those the laws the the Thirteenth Amendment. Right. That mm-hmm. like, you know, you can't be forced to do manual labor unless you are incarcerated. Yeah. And so all of those men on the chain gang built the roads in the South, built the South. Right. Built, built the, the, South. the infrastructure of the South. And so they're going to be there swinging those axes because that's that's the new slave labor. And so all of those men, regardless of whatever circumstances or evidence was against them or if they actually did it. They got those those terms and they needed to keep them in there because those were commodities to work that pick and work that road. Right. Um, I think what you said is right, because once we get to the camp, we start to. We start to see people 
we've maybe have seen characters, you know, up until this point in the movie, but you see these people. And that's why I think that like that beautiful scene where Ray makes these prisoners imagine. And he starts describing what life is like in the boom, boom room. Right. And it transports all of those people there in a way that like must have meant the world to them. Yeah. It's a fantastic scene. It's a fantastic scene and it's brilliant to write it. Yeah. It's brilliant to say this man came to came to this prison and these some of these men have been there for years, several years. Mm-hmm. And they haven't seen anything since they haven't seen anything since not to see anything, but see anything since these guys came in, since Ray came in. Since and Ray, Ray once again the bootlegging mm-hmm. criminal is bringing life to these to these in these inmates, bro. Yeah. And he yeah. just tried his. I feel like I feel like I would love to see a, a Ray Ray a Rayford Gibson biopic. Yeah, to see where <laughs> where he came to be the the man he is because he's way he's way more than just a bootlegger. Yeah, he's inspiration. He's a friend. He's a brother. If you notice, he never did anything. But betra- he never betrayed Claude. He never, never betrayed never. anybody. If never. anything, the worst he ever did was pick the pocket. I get mm-hmm. that. That's wrong. Um, but that's the game. That's the game. That's the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just like he look, he he'll 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 make you lose. He'll win off of you. Mm-hmm. He'll take the L too. Yep. He lost his daddy's watch. Damn, that's the game. Mm-hmm. I, I tried it and I lost it. So, uh, but yeah, man, it got that scene was also a great scene. It was hilarious, but it was sad for me, man. Yeah, yeah. This, scene, this is this is what these men have to do. It's bittersweet because it was good to see them imagine and see that, mm-hmm. but also to see that that's that's what they had to result to. Yeah, imagination only. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah. that was a sad, a great bittersweet scene brilliant to write the fact that they came up with that and i loved it you know what i'm saying i thought miguel nunez jr in this movie besides the, the iconic you were scared don't be scared <laughs> right mm. don't be scared you were scared um i thought that his his demise in the movie was very tragic as well because you know prison had had turned him out Right. I don't know if he was like that before he got there or if being in prison turned him into that. But he was so terrified to go back into the world that, like, I'd rather just die here. This prison system has changed me so much. I, I, I know. I can't I'm not even go back. Mm-hmm. I can't go back to the real world, the outside yep. world. Yep. I'd rather stay here. Yep. I'd rather die here. And that was like, man, it's crazy because I remember being a kid and watching them. I watched him run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed. I thought they were going to shoot at him at his feet and miss. And then he would get away and they would chase him down and bring him back. Mm-hmm. I thought that was going to happen. When they shot him, bro. Yeah. I said. I remember being in the theater, but like, nah, man. Yeah. Nah. And I and I thought they were gonna I thought they were gonna shoot Jangle Leg. Right. But that but, and, but and that here's the thing. And they I thought they were gonna shoot Jangle Leg. And they the fact they didn't made me even sadder. Mm-hmm. I promise you, because they was like, we know he ain't trying to run. We know, we know we he know ain't he going to over to get his to get his, his, his basically his partner. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And of course. I'm like, okay, you see like a, this is 1999, this is over 20 years ago, you see the, the gay character in the movie. Mm-hmm. Now, nowadays, it's an epidemic. It's like a, it's like, it's like propaganda for sure. Back yeah. then, it was like, this is prison. We're going to have one or two of these guys in there. And, and, and he played a great job. He, he did a great job playing that character. And Jangaleg was such a interesting character. Before before you go to Jangaleg, because I, cause I want to spend a, a whole bit talking about how fucking awesome this character is um you touched on something that i think is important 
uh-huh. because you know we hear a lot about the agenda, you know, and 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 the the gay agenda and kind of forcing it on, and you know, people have their positions and takes on that, right? I will say this: the portrayal of, of their relationship in life is probably one of the best and most loving portrayals I think I've seen on film, right? Like you believe that there's love there between these two, like a deep, you know, very close love there. And you've got Bernie Mac, who's this masculine man, even though the, you know, the character that he plays is, is so wonky, but it was pitch perfect because nobody ever really gives a shit about the fact that these guys are gay. Like nobody ever, when they watch the movie, go to see, they, they put that because the, the actors that played them humanized them in such a way, right? That you had empathy, compassion, and understanding right. for this particular circumstance, right? You know, mm-hmm. it begs the question that like neither one of them were gay. Because when, when the girls Bro. are there and Jenga Leg is 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 you know He on the women. He on the women. He on the tell. women. And so it's just like so so the prison did this to y'all. I th- I think it was fascinating. And I'm glad they put it in. Because right. it's, it, I think it w- was an important element to the story. And I think it was done pitch perfect. And, and, and it's heartbreaking to see Biscuit get uh, in, in, his, in, in his situation like that. But it's reality. Mm-hmm. It was like, what happens when you, get, when you get released after being in jail 10 years? Yep. What happens? This dude, Jagaleg, wasn't that way when he got there. He might have had it in him. Mm-hmm. But there's women around. So he, he, you know what I'm saying? But now he in uh he's in prison and this young man is, is, is flimsy as hell and the closest to a woman that he gonna ever see. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he like, hey man, am I? Is he gay or is he? I mean, yeah, he is, of course, but mm-hmm. it's bigger than just oh, he just like men. Yeah. He's like that guy. I mean, he, well, he asked Claude, Claude too, and he, he asked like Claude. Claude. It's interesting what he asked Claude. He goes, so you got you been in jail before? Okay, because we ain't got a problem with Justin. Right, like that's that's literally was what he said. So it's kind of like, yeah, like I take that and go, like, yeah, when Jengalet's not in 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 jail, he's on these women. When he's but in, be jail, in there, he, I got it. I got to get, gotta get money. I got to get into something. Yeah, <laughs> I got to. I got to yeah. get into something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But and then when he walked through the crowd, and he didn't, but he didn't care if he was gonna get shot. Nope. When they shot Biscuit down. Nope. He probably was hoping that it was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. At that point, man, that that was like his partner. He saw his partner get shot down like a dog. Yep. And 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 when they, they tried to hold him back and he pulled away, that was strong for me, man. I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree with the relationship, but I understand the bond. Yeah. That they that they've built over the years. You know what I'm That's saying? True. That's more so. It's more like. It's it's bigger than that. It's bigger than okay. The 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 uh, sexuality is more so. He would have did that. If that was his best friend, his yep. homeboy. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? So I'm with you. Yeah, it was a real show, man. A, a real a real movie, man. And it, it, it touched on so many different things. Um, even when, even when you got a can't get right, man. I yeah. love that. I love that. Um, these different, these different inmates, these different criminals, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They were people, dog. They were people. Yeah. And so that was smooth how they played that with the Abernathy, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the warden Abernathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no, the reader, it was a, a, a superintendent, superintendent. Yep. yep. Something like that. Uh, and the daughter grew up. And your boy can't get right. Had to have some. Yep. Well, or she had to have some of him. She had to have. Or they had. He was on her too, so they had to yeah. have some of each other. Yeah. That was dope. How that happened, and how and how the whole prison uh, owned up to it. I be the pappy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Fantastic scene. Come camaraderie. On, camaraderie. Camaraderie. You know. And again, they looked out for can't get right. Yeah. You know, which which is let me also say is, is one of the greatest nicknames in, 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 get right. in black movie history. Can't get yeah. right is a fantastic nickname. But yeah, like like they looked out for him. They saw he had a talent. They helped develop his talent. Um, I think that that probably Ray and Claude were definitely naive to think that that they was going to be able to ride his coattails up out of prison. Right. Um, but 
They had to try. They had to try. And uh, honestly, they felt slighted that they couldn't write his coattails because they're innocent. Yes. They're innocent. You know what I'm saying? So they probably like, man, God might have us in his favor if we help this kid get out of prison through his bas- his baseball talents and we can go with him. Yeah. Because we shouldn't be here in the first place. Yep. Yep. If, if they might feel a little different had they really done something to be there. And they was like, well, shit, we're going to try. But if, if, if we don't get picked up, if, if, he, if it doesn't work, so be it. They were crushed that it didn't happen because they was yeah. like, man, that was our only chance, our last chance to get out. And that's why the pacing of this movie to what you said earlier is fantastic. Because after that part, I believe we go into the pass away montage where time passes on. I think that's the last, one of the last times it may not exactly align scene for scene, but that's, we go from there to the time has passed, and then we get old Ray and old heartbreaking Carl. man. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. The scene that the scene that set up the montage was right after Can't Get Right drove off, and he said, and Claude was like, "Man, we ain't friends, and we ain't never gonna be friends. Mm-hmm. Don't stop talking to me, man. I'm not in the mood." And they and they stopped talking. They stopped talking for uh years and that's yeah. when people start even the guy uh even the guy um willie long pause <laughs> he <laughs> said when they when is in claude and ray stopped talking when can't get right left a part of claude left with him yep and when ray stopped talking it got ray and claude stopped talking it got it got real quiet around the prison it got real and, quiet and, and, cold. And, and the energy just wasn't the same yeah and folks that's, are dying off I That's say, so damn. good. Yeah, it's damn. it's so sad. It frames it well. But then when we get to the third act of the movie, like old Ray is fucking hilarious to me, <laughs> right? Like old Ray, Eddie Murphy in that makeup, doing them characters, making them faces, talking the way that he talks. I mean, it's just... It's just fantastic to me. Yeah. Old Ray is funny. He's mean. He's crotchety. He's all the different things that's 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 dope. And so it's great seeing him be mean and ornery. Um, and it's great to see him and Ray come back. Come right? back. Yeah. And let's talk about the the, the first comeback when. When Claw stole that pie and burnt his mouth up, right? <laughs> Great scene. Yeah, he had to do it. He risked his life for that pie. Mm-hmm. Enough was enough. And Ray, when uh, when um, the boss, boss man, uh, what's his name? I got. I want to get his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sergeant Dillard. That's his name. Uh, uh not yeah, sure. So. Pike. Not sure. Pike. I know uh, you're talking about. Yeah, the, 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 basically the overseer down yeah. there, the uh, the the oh, the uh, warden overseer. You will be shot. You so mm-hmm. so much to put Joe Johnson up the gun line. You yep. will be shot. He was so pissed off with with uh with the the entitlement or this this the gall that Claude had for the pie. Mm-hmm. He said, "Check this out, Ray. I'll give you the gun. Shoot this guy if yep. he comes if his foot steps off these bottles." And Ray, after not talking to this man for years, was mm-hmm. like, don't give me that, Sarge, because I'll turn around and shoot you with it. Yep. Once again, he had Claude's back. Yep. And Claude still was unappreciative. He was like, I don't, I hope you don't think I'm you do you did me any favors. I hope you don't expect me to be thankful that mm-hmm. you that you did this. Yeah. And once again, that was in my and they spoke again. Are you speaking to me now? And then by the end of that conversation, Claw was like, man, it sure is good to talk to you again. Yeah. Yeah. I think yes. I think in that moment, I think I think in that moment, I think Claude was slowly starting to understand everything that Ray had did for him. Right? Because you when he says, like, I hope you don't think I owe you anything, it almost sounds like a man that's downloading the information, right? Yep. And and trying and wrestling with the truth coming to accept the truth. The final acceptance is like when they're older and they're sitting on the bench and 
you know, and, and Claude says friend. You know, it's Ooh. just it's it's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. that did something for me, man. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Like here's it, the thing: when it's all said and done, Claude, all you got left is the people that's still there mm-hmm. by your side, and Cray's been there by his side through everything. Yeah, everything, bro. Don't eat, like, don't give him your cornbread. I'm gonna take your fade for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is. I'm gonna take the attention off of you because he 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 picked you to ask for the cornbread. Yep, he didn't. I'm pick gonna make me. such a fuss. I'm going to take the attention from you and put it on myself, and I ain't backing down. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I love that. Ray Gibson, bro. Mm -hmm. Ray Gibson is a friend that's going to get you in trouble, but he's a friend you need indeed. He's a friend. He might get you in trouble. Oh, he's going to get you in trouble because he's going to get into trouble because he's in the stuff. He's not a square. He's not a square. You know, and, and, and if you're not a square in them days, you you just gonna be in and around. You're looking for licks, doing whatever right. it is. Right. Um, you know, he wasn't expecting the the the, the long ride uh oh, for what God. they did, but, right. but he got it. Right. But I love that even as as they were nearing death, the humor and levity that he brought to us gonna be us, nigga. We're gonna be we in next. the upper room. We next You're gonna be in the upper room. Upper room. I'm right. just gonna bust up in the motherfucker in the upper room. Right. Lovely, fantastic. Yeah. Thought, nigga, I ain't give up no motherfucking hope. I'm being keeping it real like them niggas ain't keeping it real. That's real. That conversation sparks the idea that ultimately leads to Claude coming up with a gimmick for these two guys to, to to escape. Plan. I got a plan. Like, well, it ain't gonna work, nigga. I don't want part of it. Um, and ultimately they they get out um and they're at the Yankee game, you know. Uh <laughs> And they're very old. They're in their nineties, but 90s, like, bro. but they're there. Um, and, and like is it worth it? The movie, absolutely. Yeah, we spent we spent majority of our life in prison, mm-hmm. and we still gonna try to get out of here at eighty something, ninety years old. Yeah, and it's worth it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we free finally. Mm-hmm. I, love I, I love it. I love it. Um, and 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 there's one other piece before we get there. I do want to talk about. When they're so old that they start working outside the prison where Claude is the chauffeur and, and Ray is the, is the gardener and uh, hates his job, <laughs> hates the situation. He's just so angry and mean. But I love the scene, the way it all worked itself out where Ray ended up getting his watch back. And he, he said, from that is watch. Yeah. From that is watch. Yeah. That, that to me is so gratifying, bro. Mm-hmm. That to me is so gratifying. Maybe I even say, more than his freedom, bro. Like maybe even for sure. Because because you in this shit, you mm-hmm. you in this shit, right? You going mm-hmm. you bound to be in prison somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. Not for life, of course, because you're not a murderer, right? But you bound to you bound to, but because of your moves, you it landed you here. You was moving too freely and too too recklessly around this racist area in, in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Claude, Claude, sometimes. I be asking myself, would Claude be better off without Ray? Because he met Ray, like he said, my life been the living hell since I met you, Ray. Right. But hold on, we. I think the writers and the director did a great job of of showing us what type of person Ray was. I mean, Claude was in so many different facets. He was a guy that was going to get in the shit too, yes. with his his entitlement, with his arrogance. Mm-hmm. He. He was going to do and get himself in trouble, as we saw it a few times already. Yes. Dealing with dealing with um uh uh the, the white only pies situation, yep. dealing in the prison with I mean in the jail with the uh with um uh Sheriff Pike. Mm-hmm. Like he's not a likable guy to them. They're like, man, this dude this nigger thinks he's better than what he is. Hundred percent. Let's show him. He was 100%. going to end up. He was going to end up doing something dumb and getting fired from that job that he was going to start on Monday. If he even had the job, mind. even huh? if he had, if he even had the job, and you still under that's one of your takes that you you think that Ray that, that Claude Banks wasn't didn't really have a job. He was just telling people that for for the aesthetics. I've got no. See, here's what here's what's fascinating about this particular take is is that mm-hmm. we get one piece of evidence that like and that stops and. 
that evidence can go a lot of different ways, right? right. So we've got square clawed in, in the type of establishment where hustlers be at, right? And he owes people money significant enough for these people to track him down for it. What was Claude into that he owed people money, right? And this idea that I'll, 50, I'll pay you, that's what I mean, I'm $50. saying. Fifty thousand was was probably about fifteen hundred back then, right? Maybe even so, more than so that. What what was he into? And the I'll pay you. I start this job on Monday. Like that does sound like something that somebody might say that's waiting for a lick to come through, right? Like you know, sounds like, like Ray Gibson. Hey man, check yes. this out. Give me. I, I got access to this booze it's down in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. You allow me to go down there and get that. I'm gonna make you a very wealthy man. Right. That's a good deal. Do we got a deal? He's trying to, he already owes up, right? He already mm-hmm. owes uh, Spanky, Spank. But I, I'm a, I'm a, on top of that, I'm going to double down on a better deal to save my ass. The same thing that Claude is saying. Hey, yo, 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 yo. I know I mm-hmm. owe you the 50, but I ain't got that right now. Let me and, work this job and pay you next week. In the first 10 minutes, we learn that Claude owes two gang gang, <laughs> gang leaders, right? <laughs> like, it, like he owes Two, he owes the money to them guys, to them goons, and whoever them goons work for, and he also owes money to Spank. And so what I feel like is, is that I'm not convinced that, to what you said, that straight-laced Claude got himself a job at the bank, right? Because why is straight-laced Claude in, in the red with known hustlers in New York, in Harlem, right in the thirties, there's something right. there. there. There's something there, um, and it could, and it, I could be wrong, but what I do think is, is that you pointed out that, like, when you say Claude's not as squeaky clean as as he acts like he is, that's why you said it was so brilliant what you said. And so, if you just sit in that statement that you made, a case could be made that Claude's full of shit. In, in, hey, in the I, sense I think, that, like, he's he's because he thinks he's smarter than everybody. Yeah, he does. He's maybe running different kind of. I'm smarter than everybody. Licks, right? He like you know. Be, hey, I think this might be the, not the first time. This is one of the first times in a long time that we are on the same take. Yeah, I agree with you, bro. There's something there. I think that Claw was full of shit. Even his own lady started to not take him seriously because she didn't, he didn't take them serious enough. Mm-hmm. He was like, I oh, don't just don't see it. need to rush into things. She talking about getting married. Hey bro, what right. do you mean? You right. love me? This is 1932. Ain't nobody just sitting there dating. What the fuck y'all waiting for? Mm-hmm. He was on some other shit, bro. Yeah. And, I, I... <laughs> and literally the next night, or it probably took him a couple of nights to get from New York to Mississippi, but in the, at least the next night, probably or two nights later, Mm-hmm. He's smashing a, a a prostitute in a bar. Yes, and gave her his last bread. Yes, <laughs> come on, come on. You know, only do you got a chick at the crib. Yeah, you got your last two dollars, and yeah. you gonna spread it. You gonna spend it on some buns. Mm-hmm. Come like, on, you talking about geez. money management or lack thereof? You about to go work at a bank? Mm-hmm. Get the hell out of here. Think about it like this. It's it's a great scene. When Ray tells Claude right after they just finished buying the hooch that he's going down to the spot, look at the glee on Claude's face when he says, I'm going to come with you, right? It's not a reluctant look on his face. Like, you know what? You can't be trusted. So I'm kind of coming there with you. There's almost a little bit of mischief behind. Like, I'm about to get into some shit, right? (laughs) Like, you know, like I'm going to get into some shit. And so it seemed like, like, Claude could get into some shit and either he, he would get into some shit and his mouth would get him in trouble or he would try to outsmart somebody on a lick because that's, that's how he is. Even but when he but I'm not convinced down. he got a job. Right. I get it. I get it. You might be right. Mm-hmm. And he came downstairs and tried to make a, tried to lie on why he smashed old girl 
Yep. Uh, I, I gave her some money, man. She was down. She was in a tight spot. Her mom needs a surgery. Bro, yeah. this thing you wanted some ass, bro. Yeah. I, I, love, uh, some cake, homie. I love I love Ray's line. She's only two dollars short, huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, 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 Ray know the game. Ray oh, knows stop the game. Trying to stop you're, you 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 hey, you call me the con man, but you really are a con man too. I just see through all your bullshit. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's so good. That's why so I saw good. you being. I saw you being the square that I'm a pickpocket in the bathroom. He saw him from across the room. Yes. Oh, I got one. Got a sucker. That's the one. Oh, girl Sylvia saw that she had a sucker. Yes. Yes. What's your name? It starts with a C. Mm-hmm. You know and and oh. so and so, you know, to just bring it back full circle, that it you you bring up an interesting point because. Claude is a sucker. So maybe that money he owes them goons at the beginning is because he had been got on some sucker shit as well. Right. Like he had been conned on some shit. Or You're or not or, as smart as you think you are. Yeah. And maybe he wasn't doing anything dirty. But like either way, now you owe them niggas. Nah. I mean, if you if you owe that kind of bread in 1930. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, bro. You gotta get into but, some some awards, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Unless you got any other thoughts. Nah, I mean, I, I got I got a thousand more, but 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 yeah. but we we've done we've done we've done we've done a lot, we've done enough. Mm-hmm. This movie was great. Um, there 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 had to be, I think Claude learned a huge lesson. Well, when we get to the awards, I'm going to explain to you what what my answers are, and I think we're going to agree. But, okay. Uh, why my answers are what they are are going to be, but like, so I'm ready to get to the awards. But uh, amazing, um, friendship, movie. The bumps and bruises, all the things made sense, and they had to come to this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the MVP. Who's your MVP? For the MVP life? of life is Rayford Gibson. Yep. Rayford Gibson. First ballot, Hall of Fame. First MVP. ballot, Hall of Fame. Everywhere he went, even Spank gave him another chance. Mm-hmm. And yep. not only was he a man of his word in the sense that he'll bet something, lose it. And he just took the L. Mm -hmm. He also has a heart. This man that he doesn't even know. He felt a little bad. I did pickpocket the dude. It was wrong to pickpocket him, but but at least I'm going to save his life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to save his life. Um, He's always tried to include everybody in on the raise boom, 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 everybody in on the way of thinking. He read the letter to the homie because it couldn't nobody read. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Ray is the yeah. reason why things went. Yeah. Ray is the reason why the sergeant, the warden, mm-hmm. was sad to see him go. I yep. love that scene. It's quick. They didn't have to do that, but even the warden, the racist warden, yeah, liked Ray and Claude. Yep. And probably I guarantee you, Ray liked I mean, the the warden liked Ray and Claude. He liked Claude because of Ray. Mm-hmm. Ray wouldn't shoot him. Yeah. Ray always had his back. Ray yeah. was like, because 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 the warden was like, bro, I can't stand Claude. He called is an uppity Negro. Mm-hmm. Remember, he's up. He thinks he's better than everybody. He thinks he's smarter than me. Yep. And, so and, and Ray shielding him the entire time. Every time he did it again. When when the dude was like, uh, uh, we do a little, we do things down here different in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. He was talking to uh to Claude because Claude was talking about he tired and it's hot. He took him his jacket off. Right. Ray took it upon himself to be like, yeah, I, I can see that. Right. Boom. Punch yep. to the gut. Yep. He t- Once again, Always I'm taking the attention man. off of Claw, like Big Brother type, type shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take your fade. I'm going to take your L. You know. He's, or he's the MVP for sure. What's, what's interesting, I, I, don't need to say, I don't need to say nothing else because I agree with you 100%. I almost want to be like, I want to start giving out another award. Either we, do, either we rename the MVP award to the Ray Gibson MVP <laughs> award, the Ray Gibson we give award, yeah, the the Ray Gibson award for 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 the real one. Every now and then, we're gonna watch a movie and we're gonna come across a real one, and we're gonna be like, we giving him the Ray Gibson award, Ray Gibson award, or yeah, yeah, because I like that. Uh, he's he is he's one of my favorite characters in black film. Yeah, and and he's not one dimensional. No, but he's. He's beautifully portrayed on screen. Yes. And one more thing before we go further with the uh, awards. Mm-hmm. He took the fade. He took the fade and did not back down. 
did not. He wasn't just down. talking shit. He was from New York City. He was a fast talker. But when it's all said and done, I'm not no hoe, bro. Yep. I'm not yep. a hoe. And let Claude know he didn't. He still didn't get my cornbread. He still didn't get my cornbread. Yep. Let every. I think let everybody in the camp know, like. Yeah, he's a fast talker, and he's New York City, and he's this, 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 and that. But but Ray Gibson ain't no punk. Yeah. He ain't I, no punk. I love it. Yeah. And I think he was raised by a man that was just like him. His daddy died in prison, just like this. But he always talked about his daddy. His daddy gave him a watch, and he mm-hmm. cherished that watch. It meant something to him. Yep. So I all the gift of gab, all the, all the swindling, all the shit he was talking about, he had, at the, at the end of the day, he had a core about him that was strong, a core about him that was that had principle. I, I respect him. It was one hundred percent from his father. Yep. Because I think, if memory serves me correctly, the insult. What was the insult that made Ray say, "Take that back, or we not friends"? Maybe you fooling yourself, Ray. Maybe you just a chip off the old block. Now you gonna take that back, or we ain't friends no more. News flash, Ray. We ain't never been friends. And then he says something about his dad about having something the same thing in common, or something. It was I want to say it was something about his father. Yeah. Cause even earlier in the movie when they were driving to Mississippi, he said, "Bro, you can you can insult me all your all you want, but just don't say nothing about my dad. Don't say nothing about my father. Yep. Respect. Yep. You know, respect. Yep. You know it's what I'm real. saying? Who's the LVP? The whole ass nigga that shot Biscuit. <laughs> because Hopping Bob wasn't going to do it, bro. Yeah, he that was the sad part. Hopping Bob was panicking. He was like, "I don't want to shoot this man." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They had they had bonded, and you start thinking like, even the warden, even the warden, he had been there as long as these other guys been there. He yeah. in prison too, homie. Yeah, it's yeah. not like the, the it's not the typical prison where he's getting up and driving home to his wife, but he might have been. His wife might have been the, the woman that was sitting there. With the, with the pies, mm-hmm. but they're in prison, bro. Yeah, on the other side of the gun line. Yeah. So like they, these guys built the friendship and the warden, and I mean, and the rapport. That's why he was like, and I can't say, and I'm, I'm, I hate to see you go, and then right. he got choked up. Yeah, like he, he's gonna miss these dudes because these dudes made the prison not as prisony. That ain't the word, but it works. Like he made he made that prison different. He changed the, the energy of that prison. I think. I think you're right. Like it's it's easy. Like I want to go. I want to go to Hop and Bob for the for the LVP just simply because I just don't like the, the cool character, <laughs> right? Like I don't like the role that he has to play in these prisoners' lives. I get but it. it is his job, and they are uh-huh. prisoners, right? Yeah, he was a sambo. Yeah, but this is why he can't be the MVP for this one particular line. Shut your mouth. And your fat ass, boy. <laughs> we pay, he we need him for that for that line, bro. Yeah. Listen up, Jacob Boo. Yeah. Why ain't back a swinging? Mm-hmm. Why the, yeah, I get it. You think this thing is a he's an imbecile. He's a he's a uh a Uncle Tom for sure. Mm-hmm. But we Step needed his character, his character needed uh, there were there were those guys, the the the, the yes. house slave, you know what I'm those saying? Those go betweens, right? Like, yeah. you know. Um, and I think I think I think you're right. He did not shoot Biscuit. He did not. And it was in his face and his eyes that he didn't want to. That was right? perfect. Non, non-verbal communication. He didn't say nothing. And we can tell as a viewer that he didn't want to shoot this man down. Mm-hmm. And what we know is, as I think you're right, whoever it is that shot Biscuit, the only way that it is excusable is if it was his first day and he don't right. know you don't know that these men have been here 40 fucking years 40 fucking right? years bro you know and Willie so longer than since 13 bro that's and Willie you know, Long was so, damn near 50 something yes so you gotta know that like like i don't know like like it 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 feels like it feels like if you're going to be shooting, then you should have shot Jenga leg. Right? right? Like, you know, like, like if, if you're that mechanical with the rules of rules, you know, policy is policy, cross the gun line, get shot, then shoot everybody then. Right? Right. You knew that that was a shot that you didn't have to take. Right? You're like, you know. significant ass nigga. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
LVP. You, yeah, LVP, man. Least valuable. That's all you, you that's all you did all movie is mm-hmm. shoot biscuit. Shoot shoot a sad gay man. That was trying to kill himself. <laughs> that kind of nigga is sad, right? A sad gay man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out to Miguel Nunez for playing that character, man. Yeah. The only uncomfortable sure. part was when he was singing in the boom boom room. I hated that scene. Yeah. He was too yeah. glamorous with the, with the yeah. wig and all that shit. But it was hilarious. And, and uh, yeah, he, he did a great job, Joanna Man and all that. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, shout out to him for doing it, especially if he's not gay. If, if, if Miguel Nunez Jr. is not gay, Mm-hmm. And he's still doing those. He he did those roles. Yep. Shout out to him, man, for doing it for, and, for, for, for the for art. An actor. He did a great job. Yep. Um, I also want to say, um, I hate, I hate with the passion, Sheriff Pike. It's fucked up. You know, he got done the what? And I'm and I'm glad he died by the hands mm-hmm. of the other superintendent. Yes. Yes. I'm glad. I'm glad that was a that was a sad scene. You know, I really, you know, when he when he. That was a good man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and I, and I don't know if he's, and I'm not into white saviors and I'm not, you know, just capping cause, cause, but he, he treated Claude with respect, you know, treated Claude was probably had yep. known Claude for a long time. Yeah. Treated him with respect. And he was so immediately sorry for for the fact that they had spent their whole life in jail. That's probably what killed him, bro. I, yeah. I I've always I've always believed this. He died because his heart was crushed. Yeah. That the world was like that. He thought that these guys were he was even still taking mercy on Claude and um and and Ray and he thought they were criminals. He thought they were guilty criminals. They had been in jail mm-hmm. for 50 some years or 40 some years. He was right. like you guys are criminals but you guys are old. You guys done so much. You you guys done your time. And instead of you dying under the behind the gun line, if anything, you die help in this house helping me. Yeah, then he found that they were innocent the whole time. He, I think his heart was broken. I he think he says, was like, "Run, not because he." Well, good men don't wish shit like that on anybody. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. When when they're picking up Pike from inside, you know, he says to Claude, "You know, I trust you." Mm-hmm. Right, like right. you know. Leaves him with a car, a a you know a a an inmate that's been given life, and leaves him with a car next with to gas a bus in at the a middle Greyhound of gas in a Greyhound bus station. Yeah, and so you know when when he when he tells Claude that you don't have to call me boss anymore. Like, I just thought that was such a real moment because he didn't waste no time in Switching his mind. Elevating Claude and Ray to the to the, a station of where they should be, right? And I get what the you're o- saying about yeah. Mm-hmm. I get I get what you're saying about white saviors and all that. I don't think he was that. No, nope. this is nineteen just a good man. nineteen uh, was it nineteen sixty something or nineteen seventy two or nineteen seventy five or something like that. Mm-hmm. He wasn't a white savior. At this, it was he, he was a white man. Anybody right there, anybody in that in that world at that time. That part in him would have been white. Yep. It's not. Like, it's not like the writers forced a white savior into a movie, which they do all the time. That yep. that wasn't this. This is like every man that that uh, was in that position is not always racist. Most of them are, of course. Right. But it, I feel like it was, they, they they showed a good they did they did a good job of showing different types of human beings in this world. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he, of course, he was still asking him to help him upstairs, like a, like like, a, like the help. Because mm-hmm. that could be ingra- ingrained into someone like him. He's probably been rich his whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the, at the end of the day, it's like, I'm asking you to take me up there as a friend. Can you help me up there? You're yeah. not, I'm not your boss. I'm not your I, boss. I took it. I, 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 I took that. I took that. Yeah. That was a great scene. It was. Um, okay. So then finally, when it comes to fists, uh, five to one, how do you rank it? Five. Yeah. Even though I say I love this film, I don't like it. Yeah. Because it's sad it's as hell. And it's, it's so essential. real, and it's so real to me, man. But it's a five, a strong five, a, 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 a huge five. Yeah, I I am like, this movie is probably in my top 25. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. And, and if I was really to sit down and rank them, this movie probably is in the teens for me. 
of my favorite black movies of all time. Yeah, not even comedy. Favorite not even black com- movies. Yeah, because you know what I'm saying it's it's such a it's a it's a comedy, hilarious. Mm-hmm. But the movie had it, this movie would have people in tears if it wasn't a comedy. If it yes. was just drama, people would have been in tears in the first half an hour of the film. But that's the balancing act that this, like this movie, execution was great. Balances and 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 has a harmony with things because the drama is real. Right. But it's not so much drama that you forget you're in a comedy, right? Right. And the comedy is not so funny and goofy that these don't seem like real people, right? right. Like they seem like real people in a real jacked up circumstance. And the support that they get from all of these other characters. Right. It's just like, you know, I, I don't know if there are many ensemble casts that deliver a performance as good as what this cast does in life. And going back to what I said originally, I think it's Eddie Murphy's best, best performance. Best performance for sure. Yeah. I best comedic, that. best comedic performance, best comedic performance. Because it's because he does drama. Well, I don't want to parse it. He's fantastic in life. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Five black because, black because yeah, five black because I get what you I get what you're about to say. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm glad that you that, that you said, you know, you don't want to uh uh partition it and whatnot. Yeah. Uh yeah. it's just a great performance. Um yeah, man, I dig yeah. him. Even in his comedy, he he's so brilliant, bro. He in his drama, yeah. I rocked it with I rocked with it too. Um it's dope. It's just a, yeah. it's just a great ass film, and yeah. it still it still makes me feel like uh, family members at a repass. Yep. Good times, you know what I'm saying. Yep. Matter of fact, last year, at the beginning of the year, I met it with a, one of my childhood friends I knew since I was seven years old, and I then I saw him after 18. I didn't mm-hmm. see him again at 26, from 26 to 42, bro. Damn. And he called me and told me his dad died. I talked to him on the phone over the years, right? Yeah, but we didn't see each other. So I, I go to his, I go to his funeral, his father's funeral with him out there in Inglewood. Mm-hmm. It's my father sitting next to him in the, in the back in the, in the back pew, man. And um, it's crazy sitting next to my partner, bro. I, we, we were seven years old when we met. One of my yeah. closest friends growing up, and we never fell out. We just you know life happens. You know what I'm saying? I went off to college. He moved to Colorado. He moved back to LA, mm-hmm. and now I mean, you know I'm saying so, but uh. And I'm I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there in the in the in the in the church with him, both of us crying. We just sitting next to each other, not saying nothing to each other. Um, and we just sitting there. Then we go to the repast and then we go to the one of the hood homies' houses. Yep. The hood family <laughs> member be in the backyard. Yep. And they we eating and uh we just talking, man. We're talking and catching up, and then it, and there was a collage on the wall of like his mom, mm. family in general. Right. He saw a picture of his mom that he'd never seen before. And then how did that how did that impact him? He was like, because just for the record, this dude that passed away his dad mm-hmm. is not his biological father. Oh. Yeah. Right? He yeah. he he was raised by his biological father and his mom. They 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 divorced. Um and then he got with she got with this guy. Mm-hmm. We were all young. I was like Donnie been around since I was like maybe five, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. six, seven. And so he was like a dad, a father figure too. His own dad was at the funeral too, bro. We 40 some years old. We had the, we had the, we had the, uh, at the repast and he sees pictures that he didn't ever seen. Yeah. That's got to right? be emotional, man. Come to find out his dad told him, Donnie was your mom's boyfriend before I came in the picture. I'm the one that hit her family warned him not warned her not to be with. That's crazy. She's dumped him to get with the dad. They had my boy. They they fell out and she got with Donnie. So mm. this whole time he thinking that Donnie was the new boyfriend that came out of nowhere. Donnie and the father knew each other from from back in the hood. Yep. Years. We talking about back in the late 70s. Mhm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So and that blew his mind. Now we're talking about that. And he don't know how to feel. Yeah. Yeah. And you so like, and, 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 this is, and and you sitting next to him and he's your boy since seven. 
Second grade. Yep. And, and, and you and you have these pockets. Yeah. I think like what you were alluding to with Claude and Ray, there are some people that are just your passengers and partners for life. That like that's just that's how y'all came out the, the package. Like there are certain people where you like, this is my guy for life. It yeah. and it's just like, and we may drift away or drift apart or not fall out, but there's a love. There's Man. a brotherhood, you know, and, and what's interesting, yeah, yeah. there's an intimacy. And and I don't, I use that word not to make people uncomfortable because I think that the word closeness doesn't do it justice. So right. the synonym that makes sense is the intimacy that like yeah. you have with your boy. Man, I love this man. Mm-hmm. I love this man. I care for this man, right? Like, you right. know. And so, yeah. like, it's, and sometimes guys like to rough up the language. That's my road dog. That's my nigga for life. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. But the truth of the matter is, is that whatever whatever name you want to put on it, there are people that you rock with and right. will rock with at that level. Right. And it's interesting that, like, all of the other people in his world that he could have called, that he might even be spending more time with on a regular basis. For sure. For that particular day, he knew he needed you. Man, man, and I, 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 he called me and told me it was the morning. He said, hey, "What's up, bro?" I said, "What's up, dog?" I said, "How you been, man?" I said, I've been good. How you been? I was, I've been cool, bro, chilling. He said, "I've been watching mm-hmm. videos, everything." Man, I'm proud of you, dog. I, I love what you got going on, man. You, you still funny. You still as stupid as you was back in '89. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, bro. He was. Then he said, "Hey, man, I called you, man, to let you know that." So you know, um, I already said his name, but like he died, and I was like. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And the fact that he called me because dude, I remember Donnie, man, and he was a solid ass dude, man. And uh he treated me cool. He was the he was the he was the, the, the mother's boyfriend. So mm-hmm. I would come around, he would treat him cool, he would treat me cool, like I'm like another little son. And so the fact that he told me about that, because he know what he meant to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had my own dad. I had my own older yep. brothers and everything, but like I, I appreciated him because he just trying to game us up and give us game. You know what I'm saying? Even at seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. Yep. Um, and I remember the good times with him and then they going to his. So for him to call me and ask me to be there, of course, of course, yep. for sure. You know what I'm saying? And so, like I said, that's friendship, man. And we, and we met when we were seven and anytime yep. you call me, I'm going to be there, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what that's what Ray Gibson. That's I think that's how. No matter how bad it gets, mm-hmm. I'm gonna take you with me. Yeah, Claude had to learn that. I'm gonna forgive Claude you. Had to learn that. Huh? I'm gonna forgive you, like Ray. I'm forgive you. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold you against you, right? Except for that one time where he said, "You take that back." I mean, we friends. not friends. I'm gonna go back and watch that scene because I want to say something about his dad. Yeah, I think and that's and that was that was dad. one of his stipulations. You can say anything about me. I know who I am. But you're not yeah. you're not gonna speak ill on my father. I respect it, bro. And and didn't talk to him. <laughs> no. And, and, and Ray didn't. and Cla- he didn't talk to Ray. He didn't talk to Claude mm-hmm. until I mean Ray didn't talk to Claude. Claude talked to Ray first. Yep. And 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 and, and oh, you're talking to me now. You say something to me? You know, <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 great, man. So yeah, if you haven't watched Life in a Wild, it is on Netflix. I watched it on, on Netflix. Netflix. Oh, you um, did? I watched it on Prime. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I saw it on Netflix. Um, so just find it. Find it. If you haven't watched it in a while, watch it. And let us know what you think. Like, you know, yeah. like, I'd love to have a conversation a- about this one because I- I'm curious. I want to know where people rank life, right? Yeah. Um, and again, life is one of those I, and I think it's I think it's to your point, and then we'll end the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right. There is a sadness about life that you don't want to revisit too frequently, <sighs> no, and I think bro. that's why it isn't rewatched as much as some other equally powerhouse black classics. Like people watch Friday right. all the time, right? Watch some Coming to America all the time, and, yeah. You know Harlem Nights, which isn't as good yeah. as Life, you know, um, right. all the time, right? And I think yeah. life is one of those ones where you love it, but it 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 makes you feel a way that you're oh, like, man. you know, I'm glad I watched it. Whew. It's heavy for but me for that impact, bro. For I that mean, heaviness, I mean, yeah. It's heavy, man. So 
Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't have some certain things in my life happen to make me be the person I am today, yeah. and how certain films affect me. You know what I'm saying? And life yeah. is one of the films that you love to watch, but then you hesitate to watch too because it, it, with all that funny that's in it, it comes mm-hmm. with that sorrow too, bro. It comes with, the, with this that. Is the truth. Damn. You know what I'm saying? You can't get one without the other. That's what makes the mm-hmm. movie. That's what makes the film so great. But it also makes the room, the film, so heavy for me sometimes. Yep. You know I mean. Yep. You're right. Yeah, bro. Okay. Life, man, and life yeah. is more than just about the life sentence they had. Life is about, in general, things are not fair. Life ain't fair. Life yeah. throws punches at you. Life plays you cards. Those deals you cards that you have to just play with. That's life. You know what I'm saying? Your your your, your girlfriend, um, your your fiance will run off with your cousin because he, he's out and free and his lawyer. That's life. You kind of you dropping bars right now, like you, hey, you know, man. life. That's will- it. Life will have the, the person that has the ability to make you free die before they could do it. That's life. You don't deserve that. It's not your fault. It's not it's your fault. It's life, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Perfect name for a perfect yeah. Film, bro. Yeah. Great. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching, man. I'm glad to be back. Uh, and like I said, I'll pop in from here and there. And I'm not going to be here every week like I would love to be, but I will be here. I will be here, man. So in the meantime, in between time, rock with my boy. Tones, tone, mm-hmm. tone room. You know what I'm Tones, saying? Tone, tone room. And the, and the guest of his choice, yeah, and uh, of our choice because we're gonna we're gonna throw a few other people on here too, man, to see their perspective on these films that we discuss and, and break down. Once Hell again, yeah. this is Big Ja, um, along with my co-host, mm-hmm. Tones, tone, tone room. Hey man, don't know they got gambling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and bitches. Yeah, and bitches. Um. Thank you all for tuning in for Black yes. Busters. Another episode, the best black, best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, crap. Yes, we out of here, man. Love y'all. Be good or be good at it. We out. Pew to the max. Black Busters.